There are many reasons why, for the most part, penalties aren't reviewable. The fact that games would take much longer to complete, the fact that everything looks like a penalty when it's slowed down, the fact that the pace of play would be significantly worse, I could go on and on. But there are some penalties that are reviewable, because they're not judgement calls. For example, a forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage. It seems pretty clear-cut. You just find where the line of scrimmage is, and then see if the quarterback was past it when he threw the football. An onside kick that doesn't travel 10 yards is another example. Just see if the ball crosses the 45-yard line. And perhaps the most egregious example is too many men on the field. If a coach decides to challenge that, or if they decide to look at it upstairs, it can be done. Just look at the playing count to 11. Well, amazingly enough, the early days of instant replay were so bad that in a nationally televised game, they missed this call. And the failure was so bad that it led to a coach trying to punch a referee. This is the story behind one of the biggest failures in the early days of instant replay. Let's set the scene. It's November 7th, 1988, and the Houston Oilers are taking on the Cleveland Browns in a nationally televised Monday Night Football game. This is a big game at the Astrodome for the two AFC Central rivals. Entering Week 10, the Browns and the Oilers sit at 6-3, trailing the Cincinnati Bengals by one game for the division lead. Combine that with the fact that you have the New York Jets at 5-3-1, only a half game behind one of those two wildcard spots, and this game was huge. In the second quarter, the Oilers are leading the game 7-3, following a one-yard touchdown by Alonzo Highsmith. With one minute left in the half, the Browns are driving, facing a third and one. Bernie Kosar hands the ball off to Kevin Mack, who picks up six yards and gets the first down. Except, watch this one again, because the Browns clearly have 12 on the field here. And I'm not talking about one guy not getting off in time before the snap. They literally have 12 guys in the play. Two wide receivers, two halfbacks, five offensive linemen, two tight ends, and the quarterback. Obviously, that's illegal and Oilers head coach Jerry Glanville makes the referees aware of this. But remember, the first iteration of instant replay was drastically different than the system we have today. There was no system of challenges, but even if there was, it wouldn't make a difference, since this play was inside the final two minutes of the half. All reviews had to be initiated upstairs by the replay official, or by the officials on the field. Even though Glanville is pleading his case for the rest to just take a look at the play, they don't. And so the Browns picked up the first down, despite clearly having 12 on the field. After the game, Glanville made his feelings known, even though the funny part is that this did not matter. The Browns did not score on the drive, and the Oilers won the game 24-17. But even with the Oilers in a good mood, Glanville was fuming about instant replay. Keep in mind that Glanville was a supporter of replay, saying earlier in the year, there's a sense of fair play involved. If you can correct an error, you gotta take advantage of it. This moment, however, changed his mind instantly. He said we need to get somebody to wake up and quit eating a hot dog or doing something in the press box on a play that crucial with 12 men on the field. It's totally ridiculous to pay all that money and have all this equipment and can't find two tight ends, two running backs, and two wideouts in the game at the same time. If you can't find 12 men on the field, what can you find? So why have it? And of course, Jerry Glanville was so angry about this that at halftime, he tried to punch a referee. Never change, Jerry Glanville. Never change. For the record, he was not flagged for this. As I've stated in a few videos, the first version of Instant Replay had many, many problems. It's no surprise that the league got rid of it after the 1991 season, because it seemed to cause more problems than it solved, and this was one of those instances. Between this and the Bill Cowher incident a few years later, if there's anything we've learned in this past week, it's that even though the NFL is a multi-billion dollar organization, sometimes their officials have trouble counting to 11. Special thanks to all our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a Patreon and request future video topics in the description below.